What's up, family? All right, so Shea Moisture, the black-owned cosmetic company, is in deep shit with black women because of an ad they ran on Monday featuring three white women and one black woman. Black women are saying that Shea Moisture is now trying to cater to white women after black women made them who they are. I'll run the commercial. Y'all leave your comments and I'll come back with mine. People would like throw stuff in my hair and then I'd just be walking and there'd be like little paper balls in my hair. I hated it because it's like, oh, I have this and people make fun of me for it. It was lots of days staring in the mirror like, I don't know what to do with it. I just didn't feel like I was supposed to be a redhead. I dyed my hair blonde for seven years of my life, platinum blonde. I didn't really embrace my natural hair. But then, you know, as I got older, I learned how to do it and I learned how to love it. Shea Moisture, holy grail right here. It just gives us all the results that we need. It's kind of that go-to product. I think a good hair day is the best kind of day. I feel like I have conquered the world. I love my hair. I love the volume. I love the curl. I love the texture. I love everything about it. Everything about it. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody, everybody gets love. Okay, you saw it. Let me put this disclaimer out there right now. I cannot claim to know how black women feel, but I can tell you what the consensus is. And that is that black women are pissed because they feel like Shea Moisture is leaving them behind after they were the sole reason for Shea Moisture's success. Now, the biggest problem that I had with the ad itself was that if it's true, people are saying that, some women are saying that they changed their formula. But this is what the CEO of the company had to say, Rich Dennis, no relation. Rich Dennis says, the fact that our core community did not see themselves represented in the video is an error on our part. But that is no way an indication of us alienating or abandoning our core community as we grow. People are saying Shea Moisture is now abandoning us for a different audience, but that is not true. It was simply an error, but that error was a big one. He went on to say, there's this misconception that we're changing formulas. We're not. We have never done that. We will continue to focus on women with curly hair. What we have done is grown. We make over 170 products. Over 75 to 80% of them are made for women with between four and three curly hair types. So that's what he's saying. He's saying that, hey man, we got a whole lot of products. We're not changing our products that we have for black women, but we are expanding, which suggests that they are making products that cater to other women also. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't, I just don't think that is a bad thing. It's kind of like, as long as they do it with integrity, it's kind of like if it's like an artist, you take an artist, and this happens all the time, y'all know where I'm going with this. You take an artist, his fan base is black, black people help him get the way he is, and once he gets hot, everybody else figures out that they like him too. So what oftentimes happens is that that artist starts exploring different music, and he starts to widen his fan base. And he ends up getting like tons of more people jumping on the bandwagon. Some artists remain true to form and they're able to give their core base what they need, still be able to give them that fix where they can be happy. Whereas some artists actually sell out 
and they go in a total different direction to where their core fan base who made them what they are can no longer relate or enjoy what they do. So that's the mistake I'm hoping Shea Moisture does not make. People are saying that, well, black women are just being too sensitive. Perhaps, but here's the deal. Beauty brands have always underserved black women. So a company like Shea Moisture comes along and explicitly caters to black women and their needs, then that company is going to be prized. And that's how black women see Shea Moisture. This is our company. They cater to us. They recognize our need and they feel that need. Black women support Shea Moisture because they feel they're being served according to their needs, not being segmented. So it's personal. And they don't want that to change. I can understand that part. I can understand having something that you, that you love, something that you support, something that you, you, um, that you have a deep respect for. And you don't want that to change. You don't want the integrity of the product to change. So I get that. But I also get the fact that that company is in America and we live in a capitalistic society. And that's the way things are. Once we do something, we make it our own and we make it hot. The catch with the deep pockets, they're going to come running and they're going to try to get a piece of that action. That's how it is. And you should always anticipate that anytime you see some, anything get hot, whether it's us or anybody, but particularly us, because we always get left out. You know, people love to marginalize us. They love our culture. You know, they love everything about us, but us. <laughs> So they want to leave us out. So I get, I get where black women are coming from. But here's the thing that I think that black women should be mindful of. I think that you guys should make sure that you don't do anything to try to hurt that company financially. They made a mistake. They apologize for it. They say they made a mistake. They apologize for it. Don't try to take that company under. We ain't got too many black companies worth $700 million. Don't try to take that company under, especially for one mistake. How can this company do so well by you for so long and you love everything they do and then they make one mistake and you say, that's it, I'm canceling everything. And you try to start a movement to destroy them. We can't afford to do that. You can't afford to do it. We can't afford to complain that we don't have anything and then when we get something, we destroy it. We try to bring it down because of one, one uh, misstep. A big misstep, but one big misstep. A, a big a mix a misstep um, at the end of the day. Now, I want y'all to consider this. You know how uh, you might have a company like, say, Mercedes Benz, who, in the beginning, you would only see white folks driving Mercedes Benz. Every now and then, you might see somebody black, but mostly you see white people driving Mercedes Benz. And then one day you started seeing Mercedes Benz on BET commercials and you see black people in the commercials. You would never see black people in Mercedes Benz commercials. Then all of a sudden you start seeing black people in Mercedes Benz commercials, but they were running the advertisements 
on BT initially, not on the other stations, the other mainstream stations that cater to a different audience. That's how companies do. That's a marketing strategy that all companies employ. They will run the commercial based on the targeted audience they're trying to reach. So if you're trying to put a Mercedes Benz commercial on and you want the black dollar, you put a black person behind that wheel and black people will think, well, that, that car is for me. If you put a white person behind the wheel, they'll think, well, that car is for me. McDonald's does the same thing all the time. You'll see national McDonald's ads ran uh, on one station where the majority of people that watch that station might be uh, black and you'll see black people in the commercial. You'll see the majority of people that's watching a certain program and a McDonald's com commercial comes on and they're catering to that demographic that might be uh, predominantly white or predominantly Hispanic or predominantly Asian. They're going to cater to the targeted audience. So we just got to get used to that. We're growing. <laughs> we're growing as people. And our, our businesses, you know, the businesses that we're, we're, we're running, the businesses that we're, we support, uh, many of them are growing. And that's, how, that's what businesses do. I don't know one business. I don't know one business model that's out there that would not like to grow and have more customers. Every quarter, they're checking their numbers to see if they did better the current quarter than they did the previous quarter or the current year than they did the previous year. And they're constantly looking for ways to grow their brand. So believe you me, Shea Moisture is not the only company that you support that does that. But I do want to leave this message with Shea Moisture. There's an old saying, never forget where you came from. In other words, hey man, soar as high as you can. Fly to the sky. But don't forget who gave you those wings. If you like the videos that I'm presenting to you, follow me on patreon.com slash Willie D live. Patreon.com, Willie D. Live, slash Willie D. Live. The link is in the description. No more talk. What, what the man is talking about. Yeah. Order, Texas.